Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Cody Piper and I am a filmmaker. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at a tutorial on what to do when content aware fill doesn't work in After Effects. Today we're gonna be in After Effects and we're gonna be taking shots like this and turn them into shots like this. So in case you didn't see that, I've got three people here and removed all three of them. So I've had to do this quite a few times on this project and I'll show you a few examples. And this last example is the one we're gonna actually be looking at today. Um, but this is part of a bigger project called Wrecked and Redeemed where our pastor at our church wrote a book and then our worship team created a couple of original songs and we performed a music video after we released those songs. Uh, and this particular song is a really slow song. So everybody's seated except for my boy Jesse Henning right here who's walking off in front of the stage and it's pretty distracting and pretty obvious. So that's what we're gonna be removing today. So first thing you're gonna check is if your object moves past their starting position or if somebody walks past where they started and reveals what's behind them to the camera, that's gonna be really, really good for After Effects to be able to, to fill that in. The other part that's gonna make this really challenging is the camera is moving. So that's where some of the tricks that I'm gonna show you today really come in handy. So the first thing that I do is I'm gonna find the shot where I have the issue. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it inside of Premiere just so I have a safe copy behind me um, and disable one of those copies. And then I'm gonna right click on the new copy that we made and click replace with After Effects composition. Um, just because sometimes the linking and relinking gets weird between After Effects and Premiere. So just to have that stable one behind me. Um, all right, so now we're at, in After Effects and we've got the shot. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask. So once we've got that, we're gonna change our mask and set that to none instead of add or subtract or anything else. And we're gonna click on the little stopwatch to make sure that the mask path starts recording keyframes. So we've hit that, we've got our first keyframe there at the beginning of the layer. And now what I like to do is just go to the very end of the comp and make another keyframe at the end. And so what we're doing is we're just moving our mask here to where Jesse has moved. And After Effects is gonna try to fill in all those keyframes in the middle. Go to the middle of the comp now, and you'll see we'll take it and make sure it's all lining up. And so basically, I'm kind of incrementally checking. And so now I'm in the middle of the two keyframes I made, and then you go in the middle. And so I just keep halving it. So basically taking the comp in half and make it half, 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 half. So it's kind of exponentially and incrementally changing it. And so each time I'm making the mask, a little bit different and making sure that the points are moving along with the people's heads or with his foot or whatever it is. Okay, so now we've got pretty much every frame checked. Every frame is pretty much good to go. We're gonna jump over to the content aware fill tab in After Effects. Now, if you don't see it, go up to window and click on content aware fill and make sure that's open. And so the first thing we're gonna look at is the alpha expansion. Um, I usually set this to around three to five if I don't have this kind of precise foreground movement that I've been masking out. I don't want the mask to expand very much, so I'm just gonna leave it at one. All right, so moving down, we have a couple more options. So we've got the fill method, which um, I just stick with object. I haven't messed with the other ones yet. And then the range, we want it to be the full work area of the comp. Now we have the other two options. We have create reference frame. So what that does is that will open up the current frame in your composition in Photoshop, and you'll be able to basically paint that in. You can get really, really precise and really detailed inside of Photoshop. Then you bring your reference frame back in and After Effects will use that reference frame that you created to generate a more accurate fill layer. So just go ahead and click that. It opens it up right in Photoshop. But we're not ready for Photoshop just yet, so let's jump back to After Effects. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna grab a couple still frames. So you see how Jesse moves and he kind of reveals some of the background. So I'm gonna incrementally kind of move up, grab one of the still frames of Jesse, move up a little bit more, grab another still frame, just so I have a lot of room to work inside of Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm just removing Jesse inside of Photoshop. I'm using the still frames that we grabbed, some cloning tools and some content awareness some, some other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up, but let me know in the comments if you wanna actually see the breakdown and step-by-step -step tutorial of this section as well. But the basic idea is just you want a clean frame of whatever your object is as if it was not even there. So remove your whole entire object, get it as clean as you possibly can so that After Effects has a good base to work from. So 
So now once you're finished with that, save that file to the exact same file. So just hit Command S. Okay, now we'll switch back to After Effects. So what we're gonna do is actually take the mask and set it to subtract. Now our layer is seeing through to the reference frame. So we're gonna scrub forward and see that there's nothing actually there. So now we're just gonna go ahead and hit Generate Fill Layer and it will use that information we just gave it and try to guess and match as close as it possibly can. All right, so now let's see how After Effects actually did. Okay, yeah, it actually did a really good job. It's close to being acceptable. I'm actually pretty impressed with this, um, but there's definitely some ghosting on the people's heads in the foreground. Um, you see this mic stand in the background, it's kind of like flipping back and forth, and then there's a little bit more ghosting. Um, so here's what we're gonna do to fix that. Let's go ahead and jump back into Photoshop now and we're gonna go back into our original reference frame that we created. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint out all this foreground stuff and anywhere that Jesse's moving, we're just gonna paint that and make sure we have a clean spot of that. And the reason for this is as he's moving and we've got that mask, After Effects doesn't know exactly what is supposed to be the background layer. So basically I'm just manually gonna have to create this background layer and then bring it in in the spots that didn't, didn't really line up. Um, when you're finished with this, make sure you save this as a new file. Don't overwrite it. If you overwrite it, it will mess up that original reference frame um, and that won't be good. So make sure you save this as a new file. Okay. So now we're back in After Effects. So let's go ahead and create a duplicate layer of the original layer that we have. So once we've duplicated that, move that to the top. Then we're gonna drop in our reference frame that we just created in Photoshop. Alrighty, so now that's in this timeline. And go ahead and just turn that off for a second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on this original layer and we're gonna set this mask to add. So now we just have Jesse instead of subtracting Jesse. Um, we're gonna add a color overlay to this layer and we're gonna turn that overlay white. So basically now we're have, we have this mask of Jesse that's already moving across and already tracked. And what we're gonna do is set our reference layer to alpha matte. So now it only sees through where that original mask was. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that original layer and we're gonna open up our tracker. Inside of our tracker, we're gonna hit track motion. So this track point, what we wanna do is just find a spot on this frame that will work well. Um, so it looks like this spot tracked pretty well, so that's nice. Um, so what we're gonna do now is right click in the timeline layer, select new and select null object. And so now we've got our null object in there. So go up to our tracker again, click on edit target, and then make sure we choose the null that we just created. Mine's null four, and then go ahead and hit apply and you wanna apply the X and Y values. So then click okay. So that applied the tracking data to that null object. So then what we're gonna to wanna to do is parent our reference frame to the null layer. And you'll just grab this little pick whip on this little spiral thingy here, click that, drag that onto the null layer. Now that's parented to the null layer. And what that means is anywhere that null that we created is moving, then the reference frame is gonna move. So we did that track of the little square, that little brick. So anywhere that brick moves, the reference frame is gonna move in the same way. So I just decided to go ahead and make a new mask here. Um, so now I'm just tracking it along these heads. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier about how later on you can just bring in the, the heads all, like a lot easier than having that connected to that entire mask of Jesse moving across. Um, and you have a lot more control. So now I've added another mask that's gonna be set to subtract and then it's gonna be feathered. So it's actually taken off a little bit of the mask on the top and that's just gonna help blend it together. So you don't even notice a transition between the extra stuff that we've added compared to the original ground that's truly there. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding a couple more masks to take away this ghosting that's happening here. And then again, I'm adding some masks that will feather that on the top. So we see we got a little bit more ghosting here. And so we just add another mask and another mask and another mask. So we got about four masks here. That just works a lot better than trying to have that all tracked onto the same mask. And so all of this is just basically, we're keeping the part of the frame that's true and that's really there and that's actually what's supposed to be there. We're masking that in and leaving that there. And then we're showing through to our reference frame that we created, which is just a clean background. So that's 
basically the way we've moved Jesse. But if we just did it that way, it would just be a still frame moving across. It wouldn't really have removed him because of the, the perspective shift wouldn't be there. And so the content aware fill is actually doing a great job of that perspective shift. When you combine the two, when you combine the reference frame and that perspective and that camera movement and that slight shift, even though it's warping a little bit of you know the lights there and the mic stand, you're not really gonna notice that. So what I did was I just decided to go ahead and grade it and see how noticeable those things were. And to me, that works, that, that sells it. So let me know what you guys think. This is our final comp that I ended up with. And you know, to me, it looks like he wasn't even there. If you're watching this shot originally, you will never notice. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my tutorial today. I hope you learned something new and valuable for the projects that you're working on. Let me know if you wanna see more of those Photoshop breakdowns or let me know what you wanna see in the next tutorial. Thanks guys, peace.